Hi, I am uh, Arnel San Pedro, editor of High Orbit News. Uh, ang concern ko po ay itong aking eye bags because uh, it always give, gives me a uh, tired appearance. I know uh, there are several uh, factors uh, that includes uh, aging, gravity, and uh, uh, the pollution uh, in the environment. Nalaman ko po si Dr. Contessa Salvador sa YouTube at uh, napanood ko rin po siya sa Angeles City Cable News at marami na po siyang uh, nagamot. Uh, huwag po kayong aalis at uh, hintayin nyo po ang uh, procedure na gagawin sa aking eye bags. Good day everyone, welcome to the CSA Certified Skin Authority. I'm Dr. Contessa, your Certified Aesthetic Physician here at the CSA Medical Aesthetics. In today's episode, we have a different topic. It is the so-called festoon or eye bag. So a problem under the eye area whereby there is puffiness already and we start to notice it as time passes by. So today we have a special guest. Okay, um, I could say that his age is in the early 50s, so medyo nagkakalapit kami ng konti. I'm in late 40s. Okay, let's welcome Sir Arnel. Hi, Sir Arnel. Hi. Yeah, Hello. Sir Arnel na lang po itawag ko. Okay, so Sir Arnel here had a concern on, around eye area. So particularly, ito pong below the eye area. Since when you po na-notice yan, Sir Arnel? Uh, since uh, 10 years ago. Uh, been 10 years ago. Yeah. Been 10 years ago that I noticed na medyo nagbubulge na yung eye, eye bags ko. Right. Yeah. Maybe it's a combination of factors like right. uh, aging and gravity. Yes. Yung tinatawag na pull of gravity and as time passes by, nawawala na yung mga collagen and structural framework in the skin area. So actually, yung nangyayari po dito sa below the eye, meron tayong infraorbital fat pad. And yun yung fat pad na yun, dapat nakasupport yon ng mga ligaments and then mga collagen and fibers ng ating skin. But then as we age nga po, it becomes weaker. So nagkakaroon ng bulging and it will prolapse or nagsasag or yun po parang nahuhulog na po, nawala na yung support. And um, another factor, it could also be genetics. Pwede po rin kasing na-inherit. Makikita mo sa isang pamilya, most of them meron ding eye bag, meron pong conditions na gano'n. Or some naman, medical conditions, yung mga hypothyroid, yan. They tend to have puffy eyes. Okay, Kabilig, kabaligtaran ng mga hyperthyroid naman. Yung mga hyperthyroid, parang nakaprotrude naman yung eyeballs nila. So, sa hypo, yan, puffy eyes naman po. 
Um, I, I also um, have mentioned kanina sa inyo while we were talking na yung diet then has a factor also. Yung palaging salty type of food kasi parang nag-fluid accumulation then around the eye area. Okay, ano pa ba yung mga factors na yon? So, it's a combination of factors. So, na-mention nyo yung, yung aging, yung pull of gravity, lifestyle, yung iba naman talagang overworked, overfatigue, or lack of sleep. Pero si Sir, I think okay na yung sleeping pattern eh. So, it developed na lang over time. And if you can um, like look at the part of the under eye, Meron siya sa, from the medial, dun sa gitna po, and then to the center, to the lateral. So, buong lower eye, or the under eye area talaga, is affected na po. Kasi there are conditions na mild, meron mga moderate, meron mga severe. So, sir, masasabi ko na po talagang entire infraorbital region affected na. So, parang class 3, type 3 of eye bag problem. Or, the medical term, we call it festoon. Yun nga po yung festoon, yung infraorbital fat pad, nagbabulge na or nagpa-prolapse because of the weakened ligaments, collagen structures, yung something na nagsusupport ng mga tissues or soft tissues under the eye area. Another one kasi may muscle din po dito actually. On top of it, there's an orbicularis oculi muscle support, supporting also the tissues. So, medyo may laxity na rin po doon. So, skin laxity and then yung muscle na rin, nag-atrophy, nag-weaken na rin. But um, I'm noticing also yung directly below the lower eyelid, yung muscle niya may contraction din. And then, under the eye region, meron din problem. Yung tinatawag na mid-cheek group po. Napasin niyo rin po, sir, Ito po, no, yung ilalim ng eye bag, meron na rin pong sunken part. Or there's a volume loss here naman po. So, this is a mid-cheek groove or Indian groove that we call it. So, pag nagsunken na ito, sir, parang nagpo-prolapse or nagsasag na rin po yung laman na nandito, yung tissue na nandito natin, causing a so-called nasolabial line or nasolabial fold. So, yun, aging factors, tapos yung pull of gravity, so, ayan na po, nagmamanifest na. Tapos, yung iba, manonotice na dito po sa baba, ayan, nagja-jowling na. And then, ito, marionette line na rin po. So, those are things na, uh, yun nga po, aging, what, what aging is doing on our face. Uh, although, aging daw is a physiologic process. But, in aesthetics, I think aging is a pathologic process. Something that we can already um, correct. Something that we can already reverse or somehow delay the aging process. So, si Sir... Mohang ano eh. Um, actually po sir, kanina we were talking though. Actually, we, we do assessment already before we did this first part of our shoot. That um, the case of sir kasi talaga kind of challenging on my part. If you're gonna ask me po, ang treatment of choice na po talaga will be surgery or blepharoplasty. But uh, we wanted to do muna non-surgical approach. Siguro, si sir, okay rin sa kanya na wag munang magpa-opera. Tignan muna, baka meron namang non-surgical means to somehow reduce the puffiness or this eye bag or this feston problem. So, tignan po natin kung tatalab ang ating mga non-surgical techniques, ating abangan sa pagbabalik ng CSA Certified Skin Authority. And we're back mga ka-CSA. So, we are going to do a non-surgical procedure for the treatment of the so-called festoon or eye bag problem. So, our technique will be a minimally invasive non-surgical approach, okay, injection technique. Okay, I'll be using my radius, the bold lift technique. I will be starting on the upper third, okay. I wanted to have a lifting effect on the upper eyelid. I noticed already Sir Arnel had these hooded eyes also. So, I wanted to have some uh, minimal injections here okay so a while ago we did cleansing and then we applied some topical lidocaine cream and I also did some anatomical landmarkings for my injection point so I have now here my uh, radius dermal filler composed of the hydroxyl apatite or rather calcium hydroxyl apatite which are also minerals found in our bones and teeth so it's something natural po sir okay lang po so, first injection point will be the arch of the eyebrow. Okay, I have my needle here with a gauge 27. So, ideally, we wanted to open the upper eyelid. Okay. But we don't want to feminize in a way that the arch is so high. We just, of course, for male, they only have like straight brow here. 
but the goal is just to somehow lift a little bit the skin of the upper eyelid. Okay? So, hindi naman po natin ito feminize. So, just a tiny injection point here at the arch. Nihaliksay lang po. And then, I'm shaking here. If we have some ice compress, we can also like activate some discomfort by using ice gel. So, I'll aspirate. I did a marking to have an exact location of the arch of the eyebrow. It's from the outer groove here, making this diagonal line to the lateral limbus of the iris of the eye towards this arch of the eyebrow. So, I'll be giving like a 0.1 here. So, I'm um, technically below the brow region here, the arch. Okay, I'm just gonna be pushing 0.1 only and slow push. So, this is the radius, undiluted radius. It's a 1.5 ml radius. So, this is a very good filler that has a very good lifting effect. And if you want a filler that's longer lasting, you wanna try the radius. So, fillers have classifications. We have temporary, semi-permanent, and the permanent ones. So, the radius was categorized as a semi-permanent filler. It's semi-permanent because of its biostimulation effect. When you leave the filler inside the skin, inside the tissues, it will stimulate your own cells to make new collagens and elastin to tighten and firm the skin over time. So, Sir Arnel, ito po habang tumatagal, mas may nakikita pa kayong lifting effect. So, for you, we're doing a periorbital rejuvenation. So, I'll be proceeding to the second injection point, which will be the tail. Tail of the eyebrow na po. So, I'll be staying on the orbital rim. Safety region lang po, staying in the orbit rim. Dito po, supraorbital rim. Avoiding the supraorbital notch there because we have an important structure, the blood vessel and the nerve. So, I'm here already and then injecting here. Okay, inhale, exhale lang po. So, some gritty, ano lang po. From the needle, parang may sound lang po no yung grit ng needle. I need to retract or withdraw a little bit to see if there's no blood vessel. So it's negative. So I'm ideally on top of the periosteum, top of the bone. Okay, I wanted to pull the skin posterior laterally or lift it somehow. Okay, so I'm just pushing my filler because this is a pure undiluted radius. If we're injecting on top of the bone, we can use the undiluted radius. If we're just stimulating skin, we can also dilute this. Like for example, if you want to treat the acne scars, you can make use of the radius also. Okay, so I'm done at the tail. Okay, done with the second injection point. Now we can proceed to the mid-face region, mid-face area here. So my anatomical landmark will be the zygomatic arch here. So, I need to palpate for this tiny indentation of the zygomatic arch. So, we wanted to retract the skin. So, there's a pulling effect here. Because you will not, we noticed that the skin here is already saggy. So, somehow we wanted to pull it like um, superior laterally. Something like this. So, I want to palpate for that group here. Okay. This is the zygoma here and the zygomatic arch. So, medyo hanapin ko lang po yung zygoma arch, zygomatic arch here. Okay, there you go. So, injecting here, retract the skin a little bit and then needle in. And then I'm already on the bone and a minimal withdrawal there. Okay, then push point one. So, Arnel, you're okay lang po. I'm just very becoming like very very gentle. I wanna be very. I'm not on a rush, okay? So careful injection only. Po. Medyo you're feeling lang po when it's touching the bone, some discomfort there, but it's tolerable, po, right? So fourth injection point, I'll be looking for the zygomatic prominence or the malar prominence here. So, zygomatic prominence is right here. That's the peak of our, it's like your pinaka cheek bone. Dry OS, please. Okay. Actually, I also made a line here indicating the apex of the cheek. So, 
It's different for male and female. So actually, men doesn't want to have high cheekbone. So you just want to have that good arch, rather a good curve of the cheek, but not the cheeky one or not the full cheeks that uh, girls would want to have. So it's different for men po. So just a minimal injection here for the malar prominence po, Helixil. So I'll be giving like a, another point 0.1 here. Okay, pushing lang po, point 0.1. And then I'll be going anteromedially near the or in the nasojugal line or the mid-cheek line po. Okay lang po sila. Okay, now, I have to be careful avoiding my infraorbital foramen there. Okay. So, I have an indentation here. We noticed kanina, you have volume loss here. It's really sunken here. So, we wanted to correct that. We fill it in. Okay, nalikse lang po. I'll place more of my substance here, like a point two, because there is much of a volume loss at this part. There's already a hollow mid-cheek groove. Okay, so I'll be injecting about 0.2. So I'm covering this part of the infraorbital foramen, so I won't be touching or injecting a substance near the infraorbital foramen. Po. So I need a 0.2 here. And then after that, my last part will be the pyriform fossa. I needed to inject the pyriform to be able to give that lifting effect on the mid-cheek region. So, Sir Arnel is a bleeder. So, cotton with alcohol, please, and, or cotton swab. I'll proceed with the last injection point for the right side of the face. Okay. lang po. And then, I'll go dip into the pyriform pose. I need to fill the bone supraperiosteally. Okay, there you go. And then, a little bit of, like, a withdrawal. Then, push the medicine. Inhale, okay. lang po. I'll be injecting a 0.15 cc of my radius here. Okay, there you go. So, I'm done with the right side using our radius bold lift technique. Actually, we can add more next time on the chin region to have some chin projection. Okay, but we wanted to correct the under eye area. So, 7, 1, 2, or 0.75 mil was given. Okay. And how many injection points? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 injection points. Okay, so when we just have some bleeding, we just press on it to stop the bleeding. So we're now continuing with our treatment for our periorbital rejuvenation or the treatment of festoon. So before I proceed with uh, the radius on the left side, I want to finish the right side with my hyaluronic fillers, I'll be using Bellotero Dermal Fillers. So, I'll be working with the tear trough region. So, I'll be making an entry point here. I'll pinch the skin. Close eyes lang po, Sir Arnel. I'll pinch the skin like that. And then, I have an entry point here. Okay. And then, I'll be using my Bellotero Soft to fill in the tear trough region. So, the Bellotero Soft, it's a light filler, light molecular weight. It has about 20 mg per mil concentration of our hyaluronic filler. So, I'm using my cannula gauge 25 and I gently insert it up to the tear trough medial aspect. So, the goal here is to fill in that line below the puffy area. So, we know that we already have puffy under eye, okay? So, why still give a filler? Why still add a substance that's gonna make the under eye region become puffier? So, we'll further discuss that later on. So, when we see the result. What was the, um, like the idea on giving this kind of treatment for Sir Arnel? Why do we need a filler to correct a festoon? And why not just proceed with the surgery? Why not just do removal of the the fat pad below the eye area? Okay, so we'll be further discussing that later on. So I'll proceed with the filling in of the lateral canthus, lateral aspect of the eye area. 
Okay, so I'm using a cannula, so I only have a single entry point. I'm not doing the needle technique. So there are some tissues that we are passing under the skin. So we have the suborbicularis pad pad, lateral area here. Okay. So some pressure lang po sir Arnel. Sorry for the pressure. And I can see visible veins under the eye and at the sides of the eye. So those are sentinel veins that we have to also be very careful with. We have to avoid those vessels to those veins. Okay. So pressure lang po. Okay, forgive me for the manipulation here. There you go. So I'll be pushing like a 0.1 mil here to about 0.2 mil here. So we wanted to also fill in the side of the eye and have a lifting effect on the lateral, the lateral aspects of the eye area. Now I can also inject my a volume here because there was this sunken part. The mid cheek groove is so deep. See, I can use either cannula or for that one I can use also needle. I just have to be very careful avoiding my infraorbital foramen at the area near the, the nose area. So I can press this side here because we have an infraorbital structure here, the infraorbital foramen. So I'll be injecting near the nasojugal group. Okay, injecting here again. Inhale, exhale. Okay. And I need to fill the bone or the supraperiosteal region. There you go. And I can still aspirate a bit. So it's negative. So at this part, I can give like a 0 0.3 or depending on how much volume is needed to lift this groove, this sunken part here. So we're filling in a sunken part. So this area, Sir Arnel, nawalan na po ng laman or tissues, lumubog na po. So we're just restoring po yung tissues that were inside. So this is a tissue filler. Again, I'm using Belotero volume. So I have to give 0.5, half cc of my serum. I'm very careful because Sir Arnel is a bleeder. Meron siyang mga blood vessels around the eye area. So I've done the right side. On the left side, combining our radius and our Bellotero filler. So, looking at Sir Arnel right now, there was a reduction of the puffiness of the under eye. Although, we still see some of that bulges, but there's a reduction already. Because we have corrected the area, the mid-cheek groove using our volume filler and also the tear trough using our Belotero soft and the first one we did was the radius injection on our important injection points for the lifting effect we wanted to pull the corner of the eye and also to pull this malar or mid cheek region so whenever you pull towards the temple there's this lifting effect also so making use of our radius and our Belotero dermal fillers ayan so we'll show the result to Sir Arnel, ito na po ang ating mirror para makita na po niya. Actually, he has not seen it yet. So, now, this is the time to see the result. Here's the mirror. Okay. Ayan po. So, hold lang po natin together with the other hand, the entire mirror po. Ayan. Parang speechless na po si Sir, Sir Arnel. Ayan. Ikaw pa rin yan, Sir Arnel. No. Makikilala ka pa rin. We did not alter your look. We just did a correction, lifting the upper eyelid and lifting the corner of the eye and also the sunken groove, mid cheek groove. And we also did some volume restoration on this anterior medial cheek area. 
and there's a reduction already of the nasal labial fold although we still see the puffiness of the infraorbital region but I could say there's already a reduction. Sa tingin nyo po Sir Arnett, ilang porsyento ang nabawas dun sa eye bag or pagka puffy eyes po ninyo? Uh, the, uh, there was a uh, considerable reduction of yes. the uh, bulges. Yeah. Uh, Considering it's non-surgical, we did not uh, do any surgery yes, uh, and I haven't really touched the area directly at the eye bag region. Considering that uh, it was a non-invasive yes, uh, procedure, uh, I think it's uh, it works. Yeah, yeah, I can see the result yes. already. Actually, Sir Arnel, I think it's just a modification of your diet. Also, we can already make this smaller na. Kasi Sir Arnel, um, ang type of diet niya salty rin eh. Mahilig mm, yes. din po dun sa kumang, may, like, may especially may. in Pampanga region, we love those kare-kare with bagoong or we love eating something with fish sauce. Yung palaging merong on the side, right? I, I think there is something, it has something to do with diet. Uh, diet, the right. Yes, yes. So I think we have to change that kind of lifestyle na, reduce na yung mga, or if you can have a zero salt type of food para po hindi ganun ka puffy yung under eye and actually we'll still be doing another procedure for treating directly the eye bag and we also have another one actually we presented it not in the previous episodes using the eye bag threads naman so we haven't done the thread lifting or the PDO threads for the eye bag region so para totally na po mag flat mawala na yung bulge and also Another one is the Ultera uh, device also, a machine that will dissolve the fat pads. So, we still have other treatment modalities to target the festoon or the eye bag problem. So, we have means right now, non-surgically, for those who don't want to go through the knife, we have already remedies for this festoon or eye bag problem. Right? That there is no need to undergo under the knife. Though. Under the knife, yeah. yeah. Some of uh, the people I talked to, they were telling me, Doc, as much as possible, I don't want any surgery. I don't want any general anesthesia. I just want to do a procedure that's gradual at the same time, minimal. Or some people will just want to have a subtle effect because they don't want an obvious result. Because when they go back to their work, they were telling me or they're teasing me, oh, you went through the knife, you did something in your face. Ayan. Sir Arnel, I think it's, uh, he's also very busy and not much of um, like a time to rest, long, long, long time. Because with surgery, you have longer recovery period. I had one patient nag publifaroplasty, sabi niya sa akin, one month daw siyang nag eh. But in your case, you're busy. You're a busy person. In demand. Yes. You work a yes, lot. Yes, po. Sige po, so, sir. So, uh, after the procedure, doc, uh, mga ilang months po kaya yung effect? Okay, since we use the radius, yeah, the radius dermal filler have been studied to stay in our tissues for about 18 months. We had cases that the effect even reached like 2 years or even more than 2 years. So depending on the lifestyle natin and the metabolism in our system. The hyaluronic fillers within the 12 months or even more, again, depending on our lifestyle too and metabolism. So these are materials that I could say long-lasting also. So, ang importante na lang yung, yung healthy living po ninyo, healthy lifestyle ninyo. And then, um, we'll advise you for a follow-up. Actually, abangan pa po natin si Sir Arnel. Yung susunod yung treatment to really eradicate na po yung eye bag problem. So, this is just a stage one. Okay? A first treatment modality that we've done, making use of our filler injections, correcting the volume loss around the orbit, around the eye region. Okay po. So, meron po, po, po ba kayong mensahe sa ating mga televiewers? Uh, I'm inviting our televiewers to to visit uh, CSA Clinic and meet Dr. Conte sa Salvador. This only shows that the there are other procedures that that uh, will remove eye bags that will treat eye bags there's no need to undergo surgical treatment there is a non-invasive treatment just visit the CSA clinic so sa inyo po na mga nanood kung meron po silang katanungan you may email us at csaskinclinic at yahoo.com we have an FB page CSA Derm Centre Instagram 
CSA Derm Centre. Our clinic is located here at the second floor Pure Gold Dao Building, Dao MacArthur Highway, Mabalakat, Pampanga. Contact number 0453311117 or 0933-860-9193, 0917-504-4268. And kung nais nyo pong makita ang lahat ng aming mga episodes, just go to the YouTube and type Contessa Salvador. Okay, maraming salamat po. God bless you all. When it comes to natural beauty, you can trust the CSA Certified Skin Authority.